Hello, this is Tyler with Theater Design Company. I'm gonna give you a quick overview of the cooling system we are putting in for our demo room. This could also be suited for a quick uh, unboxing of video for uh, AC Infinity fan units, both their uh, cabinet fan and their duct fan. But the main purpose of this is to kind of show you how we are cooling projectors that are built into soffits or cabinets. Um, if you're doing like a porthole design or more of a conventional theater that may be behind two-way glass, or something like that but this is you've got a cool projector they just get flat out too hot if you don't but it's a very good way to build kind of like a sound box or a way to drop the noise of some noisier projectors they're getting lower now 28 to uh, 32 db on projectors but uh, this will give you a good overview of uh, how we're building this and it'll be a kind of a almost a three-part video a, a part of me unboxing these fans then i'm going to kind of show you some sneak peeks of the demo room and where this projector is going and how we've uh, created some cabinets and some cooling options to uh, route an inline duct as well as some four inch ducting to both uh, enter air into the cabinet and then we have our uh, air plate here, our cabinet cooling device to uh, exhaust it. So we'll, we'll start with this one first. So you can see AC Infinity box is pretty simple. No reason for fancy logos because they don't need to charge you for that. You got the air plate T-series. So it's a wall mounted fan, um, wall fan system. This one's the Airplate T7. They also make other versions with a, a single fan uh, as well as two individual fans, which you may have seen in some other uh, photos of projects. We actually use those to cool PoE switches and in-wall cabinets. What we have here, Airplate T7, so we'll go through and I'll open this up for you. So you can see AC Infinity. They do a couple nice things on their boxing. It's a plain box, but you can see everything's individual. What they do is they do some foam padding up here. So all your devices here, are uh, nice they're not getting scratched and we'll do an additional video uh, with this thing powered up um, or we'll edit into this video most likely but you've got uh, two exhaust fans these are uh, field serviceable so you can actually make these as um, two-way or one-way you can have an exhaust or uh, you can have them as an intake um, I have not confirmed but I also believe you can make them as ex one side exhaust one side intake to create a, a you know a function in there flowing through air and a nice digital display, which uh, I actually have a digital display for another area of the demo room that we're using. So get this thing open, you can see how nice the products are. So you've got a real heavy duty, not a paper template, but a clear template that's solid. You see the fans on it and uh, power. So this one here has two USB inlets. So you've got one there, one there. Pull that to the side. Again, everything's boxed real nice if you pull this out. We've got in here some zip ties, some screws to mount it. Um, screws are actually pretty good. They don't mar up too bad or do anything weird like some of these cheap manufacturers. These are nice. So pull this out and chuck it to the side. Standard wall wart power supply, power plug. So a temperature probe. So obviously you don't want this under, you want this on top to control the temperature. And then additional set of screws. Of course your manual. All really nice packed. I mean, it's not quite Apple packing, but it's nice. And then we have our unit here, get template. It's a nice heavy duty template. So you have the AC Infinity cabinet fan. And then on the back of it, go back in here and close into it. So you basically have your sensor, which I talked about, and then you have your two fans. And again, I'm now that I'm looking at this, I'm 90% sure you can switch those fans. This one is intake, one exhaust, or you can have both exhaust, or both intake, depending how you're gonna do it. And of course you have power plug and this controller can be bought separate for other devices. You can, so AC Infinity is kind of a field uh, configurable system. You can use this to control various of their USB fans. They have little micro fans that stick on cabinets. If you got a direct TV or cable box that's overheating, you can just set this little tiny guy on top of there um, and build this into the cabinet. They also make this stuff so it's all hidden. You don't have to buy the fancy display. Okay, let's jump into the AirPlate T7. Easiest way is just to open the page here, go over the website. So 17 reviews, $70 part. So most of the stuff we're doing at Theater Design Company, this is actually about what you would pay. You wouldn't have to pay shipping. Um, we actually deliver it. If it's uh, over $100 on our local Northwest, we'll, uh, we'll deliver this package out to you. So basically you got Airplate T7, which is part of this video. You have some images here. So I'm just going to scroll through these.
So jumping back to this, so you got ultra quiet fan, you got automated programming, self adjust, LC display with alarm. The alarm is important for our application. We're using this for a projector, so that's important. Um, display locks, fan speeds, buffer options, memory, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, you got fan and controller contain CNC face, which we've kind of shown how they protect that with their uh, foam on the top of the box. Some dimensions. Noise, only 19 dBA. So, and again, in our case, we have a projector that's going to be about 29 dB. So, zero issue. We won't even hear this. Uh, you can change that from a black to white, which is nice. And some additional specs down here. So, you've got the same stuff we talked about. Applications are really endless, especially for a custom integrator like us. We can make things happen. And technical specs. I'll go slow on this so you guys need any measurements or anything for a project. Mounting template is nice, the PDF. And the reviews are pretty much stellar. I don't even know why this guy would leave a four star. He probably didn't know what he was buying, to be honest. Because uh, they're just freaking awesome. Let's find this four star review real quick. Interesting, I'm not even finding that four-star review. There it is. So this review is actually for a different product because you can see that we're buying the dual fan, but he's mentioning he's got one at the bottom and one at the top. So so switch direction of the fan, so a bit noisier. That might make sense if you switch the fan direction. Uh, but overall, he's happy. So I mean, literally 17 five-star reviews um, I would this guy just had an issue here maybe some air running through the fans but uh, anyway he still left a four-star didn't seem like he was the most pleased um, with the whole setup so looks like I'm not gonna open up the picture but anyway this is the t7 I'll jump back to the video we're gonna um, run over here to our uh, our duck booster fans and some inline duck fans you can kind of see some of the other products they have uh, so I will edit back into the second part of our video here and we'll go on this inline duck fan system will be the next thing I'm gonna go over. Okay, the next part of this video, same projection system, we're using a Cloudline series uh, roof fan for inline duck. Basically, it's uh, their name's deceiving. You can use this thing for cooling equipment cabinets, um, closets, everything else. They come in four or six and eight inch duck sizes. Uh, the four inch is more than enough we're trying to do. I think it's 202 CFM, but the added benefit is it's only 28 dB, so it's actually less uh, noise than the 29 dB Sony projector that's going in. So technically we shouldn't hear this at all in the room, nor should we hear the projector. Um, but what this does, I'll open it up. Uh, this is gonna be in the secondary cabinet next to the projector. And this will basically implement or bring in air to our cabinet. So same type of stuff with AC Infinity. You've got your, your plain but nice packaging, uh, controller power. In our case, we're not using that portion of it for any speed control or anything, what we're gonna do is use a uh, sensing device that takes the projector and that will implement power to this. So this runs only when the projector's on. We don't need to have it running when it's not. And I'm not gonna open this up because I wanna keep it clean before we mount it to the wall. But you can see you've got model number, you've got these metal brackets that clip on and then you've got a four inch lip. And I believe this has a little bit of a lip on it. It does not. So a we'll clamp there, we'll have to confirm those things clamp tight. But that implements the air into our system. And this will make much more sense when you see the layout of the cabinetry. And I will set this to the side. Okay, let's jump into the inline duct fan here. We've got the Cloud Series duct fan. We are not using this part here with our configuration, but you certainly could. It makes a nice feature. And we'll run down here and find the exact product we're using in our system, which is the Cloudline S4. So about a $90 part, it's got a speed control on it, which we may or may not adjust. We don't think we need to have a speed control, we'll probably just turn it on full blast, it's quiet enough. Uh, there's your 205 CFM we talked about, I think I may have mentioned 202, so it's 205 CFM. Noise, 28 dB, again our projectors from what I'm reading is 29 dB, so we're below that, maybe both of them combined, we'll, we'll pull out a meter and confirm, but uh, being it's in a cabinet behind the demo room, I just don't see us having any issue there. Um, matter of fact, jumping in the vent, there's our steel duct 
uh, vent that we had, so don't even have to open up another uh, page here for these. And there's our four inch ducting. We bought the eight foot long lengths, but you could obviously buy a 25 foot long length. And uh, going down here, let's see if there's any pictures on this one as well. So kind of see their system on it, how they're using it. Speed controller, quiet, and then a plug and play operation. So what we'll end up doing is uh, taking this power cord here and plug it into our 12 volt relay, um, which will turn on when the projector turns on. And that's it for those. Again, I mean, it's another AC Finity product and probably a rare product. I mean, people are probably aren't using too many of these. It still has seven uh, five-star reviews. And uh, let's just go down here to the product description. Applications, again, it can be whatever you need to be on it. And technical specs. So 6,700 hours, and uh, you figure you got a projector bulb unless you have a laser projector. Uh, so this thing will easily outlast the projector um, without a question. And I'll jump back to the last part of the video. And then what we have here is uh, we have our inlet tube. We have our outlet tube. So inlet is going to draw air from underneath the cabinet. It's going to vent up into the duct fan. Out of the duct fan, we're going to run into here, and this will run into our projector cabinet. And then to keep it clean, we're doing some duct grills. These will get painted to uh, a brown or a black color, depending on the cabinetry. The ducts are nice. Just a simple, you know, louver duct. It's, it's aluminum or pot metal. It's not the highest end, but it's also not a very expensive part, so it doesn't need to be crazy. Again, they've got the foam on there, so you're not scratching up your devices. And so we have two of those, and uh, we'll keep it all clean in there. So the second part of the video, I'm going to be careful what I film because this is actually the demo room and there's some stuff in here I don't want to be seen yet. Um, you can actually see some of our chicken scratching here from uh, working down here but talking to clients or drawing something out for a tech that's out in the field. Um, but you can see by the photo that we have a, a ton of room. Um, long story short, this is the back of the theater room. Um, I don't even have the lights on here so I'm using kind of a spotlight to get everything lightened up but that opening will hold the sony projector it will be a uh, fabric around it it'll have a framed out opening and it will have a porthole window which we've done on two other projects which you may have seen on videos what we'll do now is kind of walk into another room that is kind of top secret this is going to be our sim racing room it's some model cars um, if you know theater design company you know most of the guys that work for us are into cars um, do a lot of project with car stuff as well so jumping into this room, this is the back of the theater. So this will have a, a hidden door from within the theater. So it's a clean, clean look. We're looking for a couple different solutions for a secondary hidden door. But the goal is to walk from the back room of the theater uh, by the seating and then have a secret door that pops open. And we'll go into what's called our uh, sim racing room. So we'll have a, uh, a full racing sim in here, full motion, uh, 180 degree curved screen. We also have up here, so some sneak peeks of that. We have a uh, conduit in this room that drops down so we can run a projection screen um, area around here so we're doing a 180 inch curved screen in here with three projectors um, then we're also going to have a telemetry monitor up here that'll do lap times um, we're hoping to have some events so that we can actually have who's got the fastest lap that will show up on this small display you can see we got power uh, network and we have a brush plate with conduit so we'll run hdmi or display port up to that a couple cabinets for some model cars that uh, we're putting in there. Um, one we picked up at a show last year in Europe, so that one will sit in there. It's a 1-8 scale. And then what we have here is where the kind of projector back goes. And again, this is just rough, so it's not finished. And we'll finish the cabinet here. But what you have is you're going to have the back of the Sony projector. This will obviously have a cabinet door. Um, it'll be on an isolation feet so it doesn't vibrate. And then the first thing we talked about, the T7... The exhaust will sit right here. Our display will sit here. So as we walk into this room, we can kind of confirm the monitoring of uh, what's going on with the temperature in this cabinet. It is tight. It's one inch around the projector all the way around, but we do have some extra volume in there. And then the second part of what we're doing here is we have this, this will get switched out. So this will be black outlet with a brush plate. And under here, this will be our four inch vent coming in. The vent will come up to here to come across our duct sits there then we four inch duct into here projector and then we come out and exhaust there 
So we have a full inlet, 202 CFM comes in, and we have our exhaust fan that will go out. So for my calculations, easily enough air volume to keep the projector cool. Um, the Aircom T7 has an alarm on it, so we can uh, hear that if something does happen dramatically. We won't hear it over a movie, but we'll hear it and go through. And then the other thing that goes in here is a 12 volt trigger. So we'll have a 12 volt trigger out of the projector that will manually turn on the inline duct fan. And so what that duct fan will do is only turn on when the projector's on. And as you know, most projectors, once they're shut down, will continue to run for 30, 40, 60 seconds. That duct fan will continue to run and uh, keep everything cool. So this will be all finished product and uh, we'll do a video and some snapshots on this separately or we'll edit it into this video depending on the time frame of getting that done. And again, this has cabinets. So when you're in this room, you don't know there's a projector in here. You don't know all that stuff's here. It's all completely hidden. So it'd be kind of a nice feature. And uh, again, the power's off in here. So we're, we're still in construction mode. Maybe a month or two in the demo room will be done. Sim racing room will be done sooner. And uh, that's it for now. If you have any questions, shoot me a message or a comment below. We're uh, just getting into this YouTube video stuff. So definitely rookies. Um, we've had a couple guys that want to do some professional photography for us. But uh, cost of that's just a little too much for me right now. So we'll move it on. Thank you.